was taking my kids to school. And I got out of the car and went to the trunk. And as I was about to open it, this taxi came out of nowhere and slammed into the back of my car. I fell to the ground immediately. I remember the first thing I was thinking about was, what about my kids? There was a teacher there. They actually took the kids into the school one at a time and was very careful to, to, to kind of make sure they couldn't see what had happened behind the car. Over the course of the next three weeks, I had 11 more surgeries. Eventually, uh, I had to amputate my lower legs because they were crushed so badly. It's a very strange experience to wake up and your legs, you're not on. That first time when I'm sitting on my bed and looking in the mirror and saying, this is my new body, that's when it kind of hit me emotionally about how much my life was going to change. Seventy is a big number. If 70 different people hadn't taken an hour of their time to go and give blood to the New York Blood Center, life would be very different for my kids. Blood is the one thing that can't be manufactured. It can only get to you if someone donates. Whether you're tall, short, thin, fat, you can give blood. I'm alive entirely because of the generosity of others. I don't know who they are, but they did it, and I'm alive. You can't control what happens to you in life, but you can control how you respond. What started as a couple of friends giving blood became a couple of friends organizing a blood drive, became two blood drives, became six blood drives. Every day, we have blood flowing through our veins that we don't realize we have a little extra and we can give some of that. That ends up saving someone else's life. That someone else was me.